Hey guys, it's Drew from Diving Sports, and today we're gonna learn how to take this and turn it into this. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your side mount tanks with your side mount regulator so you can go diving. I'm gonna go through all of the materials you need and how to set them up, how to tie the knots, how to make everything secure and put it on the tank in a way that's gonna work best for you. Quick disclaimer though, this is not a full instructional video and it does not stand in the place of any formal education or training. So if you haven't done any side mount training before, look into doing a course with your instructor at your local dive shop before and just use this as kind of a tips or tricks video. Now let's talk about materials. For each tank, you're gonna need basically the same stuff. You're gonna need a tank necklace made out of either paracord or nylon rope. You're gonna need some hose retainers to keep all of your hoses in place. I like to use elastic bungee cord, but you can also use um, just plain rubber straps. And you're gonna need a tank band, either a cam band or a metal one like this, which is attached to a bolt snap, and that's what helps hold it onto your hip D-ring. And since we talked about the materials, let's talk about the tools to get it all set up. Basically, you're gonna need a screwdriver, a lighter, and some scissors. Now, for the necklace that's gonna go around the tank valve, that's usually the easiest one. It's just gonna be a loop of either paracord or nylon rope, and you're just gonna tie it in a loop and you're gonna burn the knot so it can't come undone. Now, let's talk about the tank necklace a little bit more. I like to use something thin like paracord or nylon rope, like I said. You don't want it to be too bulky because it's gonna get in the way when you're actually attaching it to yourself. Uh, and we can talk about how to tie it off and make sure it's gonna be nice and strong. You also don't want it to stretch because that necklace is generally used for attaching it to yourself out of the water or to attach it to the back when you're finishing up a dive. For the hose retainers, you kind of have two different options. You have elastic bungee cord, uh, which I prefer, or you have a standard rubber strap you can either buy or make. They have pros and cons for both, so we can talk about those. So some of the pros of the rubber band is they're flat and they're streamlined and they stick to the tank, so they don't move around too much on the dive. The cons are they're kind of fragile, so if you get a little bit of a tear and you pull on it, it can rip really easily. The other downside is a rubber strap like this doesn't have anything to grab onto, so when you're using dry gloves or thick neoprene gloves in cold water, it can be kind of hard to grab and stretch it out. Now, for the elastic bungee cord, the pros of this one is it's nice and easy. You can adjust, you can make it exactly the length you want. It's really quite stretchy and it's durable. I find that when you do tear it, it's a little bit easier to tell when it's gonna go and they don't tend to spontaneously explode on you. However, the knot does tend to come undone sometimes and they can roll around on the tank. So when you're pulling out the hose, uh, they can pop off the tank, which can be pretty annoying. For the tank band, you've got two options. You've got the metal tank band, which is nice and low profile, but you do need a screwdriver to tighten it and loosen it. Or you've got the standard cam band made out of nylon webbing, which is a lot easier to adjust, but it is a bit bulkier. Now these are there to hold on your bolt snap, so let's talk about those. The tank band is gonna be holding on the bolt snap so that you can connect the tank to your harness. Generally, you wanna go with a bolt snap that's small enough so that it's nice and streamlined, it sticks to your body, but not so small you can't get your hand through the eyelet and actually manipulate it underwater. And now connecting the bolt snap to the tank band, all you need is another loop of paracord or nylon rope, uh, and sometimes a weight keeper if you're gonna be using the webbing cam band. So we're gonna start by making the tank necklace and the little loop that holds the bolt snap onto the side of the tank by the tank band. It's the same thing, it's just different size loops. So you're gonna start with just some open paracord or some nylon rope, uh, and you're gonna tie a knot. I'll show you a couple of different knots that I like to use. Um, so let's have a look at that. So the first is the most simple, it's the overhand knot. So like everybody knows, you just tie a knot like that and pull it. The second knot that is commonly used is a sheet bend, uh, usually to tie ropes together. And that's what we're doing with the two ends. So just like that, and then it tightens itself. And another common option would be a figure eight knot with the two ends, similar to the overhand, but just like that. So I've got my loop tied. This is obviously bigger than I need. If it's for a tank necklace, um, you want something about that size. Again, you want it big enough to be able to flip over the tank valve without having to untie anything, but you don't want it so big that it's gonna start to get twisted and wrapped around things on the dive because that's gonna get in the way. So if you have the size you want and it's all tied and tight, we're gonna use our scissors. So we're gonna start off by cutting off the ends a little bit, leave a little bit of space because what we're doing with the lighter 
is you're actually gonna melt this down and burn it into the knot so it doesn't untie. It's not just so that this stops fraying. I'm gonna melt it in. And then what I'll do is I'll actually press it into the knot like that so it doesn't come undone on itself. So if we got our two different loops here, one's for the tank necklace, that's this one. And then this one's gonna go for attaching my bolt snap to the tank band. The way you do that is you just loop it through itself and attaches like that. You'll see, notice I've got some hockey tape on this one to add a little bit of extra grip and so that people know it's mine so it doesn't start running away on me. You're gonna have two different lengths for this one depending on if you're using a cam band or the stainless steel band. If it's stainless steel, it's gonna be a bit shorter because it doesn't have to go as far. If you're using the cam band like this, it is gonna to need to be a bit longer because it's gotta to have to go through the entire length of that and that's not quite big enough. So if I was using this, I would need a longer cord loop. The next thing I wanna show you is the hose retainers made out of bungee cord. If you're using the rubber one, you can just buy it pre-made, um, so that's really easy. If you get six millimeter bungee though, you are gonna have to tie the loop. You want it nice and tight on the tank band, so whatever tank you're using, just remember to size it a little bit shorter uh, than you think you need, so it's nice and snug, so it's not flopping all over the place. Now I've got this one here. I believe this is a quarter inch bungee. It does work, but especially if the bungee cord is a little bit soft, this is gonna be a little bit too thin to use for your hose retainers because it's going to start to bend and the hoses and the regulators are going to flop away. So I definitely recommend getting the six millimeter, a little bit thicker, stiffer bungee cord for when you're using this. Once you've cut the bungee to the length that you need, you're going to take your lighter and just burn off the extra bits so it doesn't fray on you. You aren't going to be able to melt the rubber inside, so don't bother trying. And then we're going to just tie an overhand knot to the size that you need. And because it stretches, it's going to look a lot smaller at the start than it actually ends up being. So remember to pull it really, really tight and it's gonna look something like that. You can cut off the excess bits, um, but don't make it too short. One of the things people do struggle with is setting up their cam band setup, especially if you're using one of these. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing we're gonna need to put on is the uh, little tri-glide, uh, because once it's all set up and put together, you're not gonna be able to install it. So it's gonna start by going on here first, and I'm gonna put it on, Ooh, that makes a lot of noise, as far as I can past the Velcro. That way it bends easier. And then we're gonna put this through. All the way. What this tri-glide on here is gonna be doing is that's holding this loop and my bolt snap together. So I'll do that in a second. First, I'm going to thread this through the cam band. Most of them have little numbers that show you where it goes in what order. So we're gonna throw it through here, down through number two. Back here. And before you go through number four, the last one right on the end, this is when you're gonna be adjusting it. So when you're putting on the tank, you can easily pull and loosen it off or you can pull on the other end and tighten it to make it smaller. Once I've got this all set up, it's all threaded through and it's the right shape and size, I'm gonna install my bolt snap onto the tri-glide. Now I'm gonna make sure that this buckle isn't gonna be against my body because that's gonna get in the way of my hands when I'm trying to move my tanks during the dive. So I'm gonna make sure that the cam band buckle is as far away on the outside and that the tri-glide is gonna be on the inside close to where it's going to be connecting to me. Now that we have the cam band set up and the tri-glide all good to go, we're gonna attach our bolt snap. So again, it's gonna be very easy. We're just gonna loop this through like that, get it nice and tight, loosen off the cam band just a little bit to slide this through. And eventually it'll go through like that. And we want the knot to be on the outside because that's what's gonna hold it in place, like that. And if you look at this, I've made sure that the buckle is on the outside, not against my body because I'm gonna have issues getting at there uh, with my hand because it's gonna be too close. Now, if you're using a metal tank band like this one, 
You can put some shrink wrap on the outside just to protect yourself and it a little bit. Uh, you can also put stuff over top. Some of them come with little nylon webbing covers. We're gonna make sure that our bolt snap here, again, the knot is just above, so it stops it from sliding around. Uh, and it's just a little bit longer than the width of the tank band. The reason I do that is so that this can still move a little bit and it's not super, super tight. Because if it's really tight on there, it's kind of hard to manipulate. Once you get it where you want it to be, it's just nice and easy with a screwdriver and tighten it down as tight as you can. Since we have all that put together, let's see how it goes on the tank. So this is my left tank, so it goes on this side over here. You'll see, you'll notice because of the way the handle goes, you always want the post facing into you and we're gonna make it so that the valve always is parallel to my body. So we're gonna start with the tank band and the bolt snap. Those are gonna go on first. I'm using a metal tank band, so I wanna make sure that the screw on here, because it's a little bit sharp, is as far away from me as possible. So I'm gonna line it up with the handle because that's gonna be on the outside of my body. So it goes over top and then I'm gonna to remember to put the paracord underneath so it traps it against the tank. So when you're lowering down the tank band, you wanna make sure it's the right height on you and we can talk about how to adjust that and kind of fine tune it a little bit in a minute. But once you get it where you need it to be, again, the screw is gonna be in line with the handle so it doesn't sit next to my body and I have less chance of ripping open my dry gloves on it. And I'm gonna make sure that the bolt snap is the correct distance away from the other side of the valve. And now when you're adjusting the bolt snap, you wanna make sure that it's far enough over on the tank so that when it's nice and tight, the gate of the bolt snap lines up with the other side of the tank handle. So the post here, that's where the bungee connects to your tank. The bungee is gonna to try to spin the tank. And like we talked about earlier, you want the tank valve to be nice and parallel to your body. And that's what the bolt snap's gonna be doing depending on the size of the bolt snap and the length of the cord on here that's attaching to it, um, that's gonna depend on where you put the bolt snap around the tank. A good rule of thumb is at a 45 degree mark between the post and the back of the tank valve, um, but then you can adjust from there as needed. And if you're using the cam band as opposed to the metal tank band, you're just gonna lower it into the same position as you would this one, and then tighten it up, and then make sure it's nice and flat and streamlined. Next up is the hose retainers. Generally with your left hand side, you're gonna be using one and for your right hand side, you're gonna be using two if you're using a standard setup which has a short hose and a long hose with your regulators. If you're like me and you have two medium length hoses, you're gonna be using two hose retainers on each tank. So if we've sized these correctly, they should be just a bit smaller than the tank and when you stretch it down, it should fit nice and snug but you should be able to stretch it and get a hose underneath no problem, just like that. And lastly, with our tank necklace, I wanna make sure that these are just big enough so I can get it over the valve without having to untie anything and it's not permanently on there. So if I need to remove it for any reason, I don't have to cut it and make a new one every single time. And let's talk about putting the regulator onto the tank. So again, this is my left-hand side. So if I'm diving, this is gonna be over here with the valve and the DIN fitting facing towards me because I always want the regulator on the inside. That way it's protected from anything on the other side, especially if you're doing any overhead environments or restriction diving, you're not gonna be smacking the tank on the ground or whatever's beneath you. So we're just gonna screw it in. And as with all of the DIN fittings or any fitting in general, just make sure you're not accidentally cross-threading. So if you feel any resistance, stop, back it off, and make sure there's nothing going on inside uh, and you're putting it in correctly. Otherwise, you can damage both your regulator and the tank valve. And again, this is my left-hand side, so I want my inflator hose for my BCD facing directly inward so it can go and plug into the connection over here. And then I'm gonna stow my hoses through my hose retainers, my bungee cords, and I'm gonna make it nice and clean and pretty so I don't have anything sticking out. Just like that. So you always wanna make sure that the hose is nice and clean, it's not twisting or anything like that. When you are getting new side mount gear and new hoses with your regulators, they don't often know their shape, but take a little bit of time to learn it. So when you do put it in, really make sure you're getting them in there in the right uh, position. And you'll notice that my high pressure gauge is pointing down. It'll be pointing behind me. The reason we do that is to protect it so it's not sticking out in front. We're not diving in anything where it's so restrictive where I can't reach back and just flip it out to the side to look at my gauge. Now, when we're trying to estimate the correct height for your tank band and your bolt snap, 
it's gonna vary person to person and how big you are, where you put your D-rings. But a good rule of thumb, what I found, is I wanna make sure my tank sits underneath my arm so I have full range of motion in front of me. And then my bolt snap and my tank band are gonna sit roughly level with where my um, waistband is gonna be of my harness. And I think that does it for this video. I hope you guys thought it was really helpful. We are gonna be making more videos for how to set up your side mount regulators, how to choose the correct hoses and the right regulators for the setup, and also how to adjust your harness and put everything on the way it fits you. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below so I can read it, I'll reply to you guys. If you have any other suggestions of videos you want made, let me know so I can get started on those. Uh, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you in the next one.